think uh, that's always has a tremendous, uh, uh, I would say, ambitious plan of getting everything working together virtually. Uh, and the complexity is on hardware, planes, car, I mean, stuff that looks really simple if you compare that to human body and, 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 the, and, the, and the real life of ourselves. So very quickly, uh, the company BioCerenti is based inside a, a hospital in the largest Paris hospital called La Pitié Salpêtrière, which is a very old hospital. It was created in the, in the 13th century and then grew and, and it's now a square block of Paris. Uh, this is some of our teams. They are, how do we get data from patients? We're going to show that, but it's basically using second skins. We have a first skin. We have second skin for sport. Try to make second skin for medical with many, many measurements that can be taken on persons. Very quickly, I'll go back to the past time, and uh, we see an acceleration of the data. As we see the medical care grew over time, uh, our target now is to make sure that we can have not only a patient which are our person, basically, living normally with heavy pathology. Uh, there is more and more uh, people uh, that have those pathology, uh, the, 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 the capability of being dynamic against them uh, is very strong now in diabetes. It's not strong for all, so it's a science and medicine for all. And it's growing uh, almost, almost, almost like a, a vertical curve now, the, the speed of accumulation of medical knowledge, uh, thanks to companies like GE, thanks to many companies, and also the global community of reaching and linking things, just exponential. So there is two things, there is a capability of managing those data, and all, as well as doing things. What's been happening? There has been an imaging miracle. Uh, you don't, if you look at it from inside the, the, the medic, med, medicine, uh, you, you, are, you have a CT scan and they became uh, uh, MRI and now you can have a, a functional MRI and you, and you see things happening inside body as well as you have living cells, microscope, I mean, things are just in, 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 unbelievable. True for robotics as well, uh, this is a, a company growing very well and doing very, very well. Called, it's a product called Da Vinci, which is used mostly for uh, in, inside the body operation. But the doctor here on the, on the left is, is actually doing, driving those, those different arms, and he's driving many arms instead of a few inside the body and when he's doing this. It's true also for DNA sequencing. How much do we know of each individual? How different are we to each other? Uh, on, on the fact of making a, a photography of who you are, what are your, 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 your genes and how they combine together. And it will be true of AI. Today, uh, we heard about artificial intelligence used for many cases. Still behind, still a lot of work to be done before AI can work, but it's exponential in what we are going to be able to do. Now, there is one problem with healthcare, which we all know, and I'll go back to that, is we have to do things economically. We have to do things simply because there is a, a, a ceiling. A ceiling in the sense of how much we can spend as percentage of GDP. And if you work with pharmaceutical as well as big medical device company, uh, innovation goes much faster than what we can pay for in medical. So you have to start working for uh, low cost and inexpensive solutions. Uh, in, as well as you work with other things, and therefore using the digital model. What created the digital model of the year 80s to the PC world, and then the software world, and then the uh, connectivity world, and internet world, has been a number of things, and try to apply that to, to healthcare. And that's what my company is doing. If you look at, the, at digital health, it's hugely complex. What you have here in the middle is one of our mannequins, I would say a real man, uh, with uh, sensors on himself, and I'll, I'll show that in a minute. But you really have hardware, biology, software, data, everything gets combined, and as, get, as it gets combined in medical, in it, every medical key pathology, you have big guidelines, which sometimes are hundreds of pages, and for sure, many, many, many scientific articles, and a lot of debates on those guidelines. So applying the best of knowledge within those guidelines at the best of world uh, currency is what uh, um, using digital you can bring to the, to the device. So I'll quickly zo zoom in to what we do in, in my company in detail. So we are to taking uh, insufficiency pathology, pathology where people have to live with a, a problem. We started with epilepsy here. You see the li this little girl. Uh, she's carried by, by her father because she, she has a, a, a seizure, an epilepsy crisis, and therefore her brain kind of switch off for a period. And it's a, it's a critical pathology because people have to live with it. You don't get very few, you have medication which will 
basically unable, slow down the brain and enable people to live with it, that about 70% of the people will be, will, be, uh, will, will be able to go out of the seizure process, but at the cost of having their brain decrease in speed. Who wants to have your brain you know, slow down? You don't want that. So basically, that's a problem. And the second one is heart failure. Heart failure is a, is a very large pathology. It's mostly elderly people, uh, but it's, it's a, when your heart starts to not pump well enough, whether it's for different reasons and complexity, but it's two, two examples of pathology what we started working from as a company. So one of the problems is characterized by crisis. The second problem, it's not linear. Uh, sorry for the spelling mistake here. And it goes in degradation. Uh, your pathology will go down and, and your health care will go down. And you won't still have to live at the highest level. So what did we do to try to solve that? We used the model, which is a typical model of digital. Uh, how do you have a doctor behind everybody at any time, at every time, at all time? There's no choice but to put the patient at the center. And I think that's some of what you explain, is a patient becomes centric, and if you can put the right digital tools around it, you can do it. So wearable is one of the capability. Having more intelligence in the apps is one possibility. Having a lot of computing power on the cloud is one possibility. And of course, when you can, capturing algorithm is one possibility. But the business is an interaction, back and forth, between medical care provider, patient and family, back and forth, and trying to have the patient driving his own health. If we drive your own health, it's like the pollution, it's like everything, you can, you can really improve dramatically the outcome. So how, how can you do that? One, the two pathologies that I describe are two among, among several, but they are linked to data. Because depending on the time of day, depending on the, on, on the, on, on the time of year, depending on the many things, your health will change. It's not just DNA, which is one time you can take the DNA, but it's dynamic. It's changing all the time. It depends also on the medication, how good you've been with your observance, how you manage all that, and your health will change over time, therefore. So how you could do that? We needed to have sensors in many positions. Not just a few sensors, but many sensors that goes onto the body. And typically, they, they, here on, on my image on the right, you have electrodes. The easy way to solve that on wearable is to do something on the wrist, on the wrist, I'm sorry, a, a watch or something. But how many things can you put on, a, on the things? And how many medical data can you get from the watch? Not so many. It's quite complex, a lot of work to be able to follow your heart from the... From the from, the, from a watch or do, do things like that, but if you want to measure complexity, you cannot. You have to really do something better. So there's a few easy positions and, and a lot of a more complex position. So what did we do? One of the potential is to use patches. Huh? The patient can put a patch, you glue that on yourself, you can, you can carry that for a day or two, uh, maybe a week, uh, and, and it will, will be able to capture stuff. But the patch has some problem is the fact that you first cannot do it over the whole body. It has to be localized. And secondly, it, it, it's still a patient has to be able, if you want to do that on a, on a long-term basis, the patient has to be able to self-equip himself. So you have to be sure you have no mistake. You have to be sure the person can, can capture the, uh, or, or, or put the medical device on himself. And so what we selected to do is underwear. Uh, so basically, uh, as, a, as a medical device company, we are really an underwear company, and we have a uh, first device was for epilepsy. It was based on, on uh, being able to measure the, the head and the, and the torso together. And so it's a, it's a cap and an underwear. The second one is for heart uh, monitoring and, and, uh, and, and, and cardio insufficiency. And can you wear that while you work? Of course you can, yeah? So you look like, all right? And the computer... It's just a small device which is flexible and, and it's flat and it's therefore easy to, to carry on, on yourself. Huh? That's a body computer which is really a replacing a, 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 a multi-sensor medical device uh, thing. And as we go on um, from that basis, you, we, we started to, to work on different subjects. So the one on the, on the left here will never happen to a man looking that good, but basically it's an underwear which is used for a very important pathology, uh, which is taking 20%, 20 of, a, of, a, of human have issue with uh, lower urinary tracts uh, leaking and issues like that when you get older, and therefore it's used to monitor that and be able to capture the proper treatment. The most complex device we have is this. It's, a, it's for what's called polysomnography. It's when you have a sleep disorder 
and you need to be captured during a full night. So it's really a pyjama plus a cap. The, the challenge is to be able to wear it on yourself. Put it on when you're home, as opposed to being staying in a hospital connected to wires everywhere for one night, two nights, or one night, one day, to another night. And it makes 80 measurements that are synchronously measured together. The, the doctor will use the measurement from the, uh, from the head to look at micro-sleep, sleep disorders, capability, and it all has to be recorded as accurately as, as an automotive sensor, huh? because you have a real-time issue, your, your head does something, then the heart does something, then the breathing does something, and it all goes back and has to be linked together. Uh, if we look at what is happening with this, uh, what the delivery has to be, it has to be a textile, which is a consumable, this goes to the washing machine, uh, you're going to wear that for 40 days on average, two weeks, uh, 40 days, depending on which pathology you have. And, and you have to have the, the computer, and you have to have a, a, a software which goes with it, an app. Uh, you have to have a cloud software, and you also have to have doctors online, which will take the data and capture the data. So basically, it's moving over time, and this is a European base slide, but we, if you look at the changes, by 2030, the European community expects that many patients in those heavy pathologies will be connected almost, almost every day, if not full-time, almost every day. Uh, it goes, of course, with a lot of computing power that has to be developed on the back end, and it goes with uh, needed to put the data. You use IoT-type streaming of data. You have to, uh, the data comes into the system, back to the doctor, back to the scientific platform, back to the person. So there's a lot of traffic that is, needs to be going on. And as I said, you need to have a telemedicine center. I think you, you call that uh, monitoring or uh, flight control uh, has to be uh, set to be, to be working. And what are the next uh, future for us? In 2022, uh, we are working with Big Pharma Lab to try to develop what's called dynamic treatment. So instead of having the same pills that you take every day with the same doses, uh, target is that the measurement helps you trigger how you're going to uh, what pills you have to take at what hour, and if you change the dose, like you would in a hospital when the doctor is near you, you're going to change and be able to avoid uh, decompensation or heavy, heavy issue that will happen to you. And not only you'll be monitored, but you, your, your treatment, your, your, your medication is going to be dynamic in the way you take it. Instead of, today it's mostly fixed by weight, how much you weight, this is the dosage, you get it by weight, and, and that's basically it, so it's changing. So, what you, if you look at it potentially, uh, every use case, or I, I don't come from this medical uh, background, but the engineer, the designer, the experience designer, all those things will come in or are coming together, and, and it's a potentially, with artificial intelligence, it's a potentially explosive new, new way of looking at healthcare in the future. And of course, this uh, healthcare dynamic has to become the key element of the future. Okay, thank you. Thank you.